Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I am in fact an employment attorney and on this channel, this very channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. Now, we have a question here. It's actually a, a kind of a back and forth exchange that we had um, from YouTube user Chris for Hope, who started posting on this thread about 12 days ago. And I'm just gonna read the exchange um, and then I'm going to answer the question kind of like line by line. There's a lot going on here. So Christopher Hope said, hey, Vincent, I love your channel. Thank you. Uh, and goes on to say, so currently I'm waiting for my local EEOC to get permission from Washington, D.C. to start the litigation process on my behalf. I don't currently have a lawyer, but I did go to a consultation last week and the lawyer made it sound like all the hard work had been done. And so now they should just jump on board. Why would I hire them if the EOC is going to do all the work? I responded, hey, I actually have a video on the channel about the EOC claiming that they're going to do all the work for you. Definitely recommend checking that out. Then Chris Perho responded about 14 hours ago, I think. Hey, Vincent, so I found the video where you discussed how having an attorney is better than representing myself, and you also touched on if I was going through the EEOC process, but you never spoke specifically about if I've gotten to the litigation process and how still hiring an attorney would be beneficial. The EEOC has notified them that they found evidence for five different claims and we turned down a settlement during the conciliation process. Do you think that maybe I have a good EEOC here where I live or should I still hire a lawyer? We have been waiting for six months for permission from DC to start litigation. And I responded again about three hours ago. I'll try to make you a video for tomorrow on this topic. All right. So, oh, and then Christopher Hope posted again 11 minutes ago. I almost missed this. So to be clear, unquestionably, if I'm at the litigation phase of my process with the EEOC, do I still need to hire a lawyer? How do I hire a lawyer? How do I know a lawyer is going to get me more money to make it worth a 30% fee at the end? Okay. So lot going on here. Let me first say, I hope for your sake that the EEOC is actually going to litigate your case for you. In my experience, they do that in less than 2% of cases. And that makes me think they might not be doing that for you here. Just, just being real. Now, let's hope I'm wrong. Certainly seems you're very confident that they're going to litigate it for you. Certainly hope that that's true. Hope they're going to litigate it for you. <sighs> that's great. Now, the idea that all the work is done during the EEOC process and litigation is the easy part is complete nonsense. Um, almost none of the work is done at, during the EEOC process. It is, listen, cases can get settled during the EEOC process, but like, Generally, the EEOC process is the opening like three to four rounds of a 12 round fight. Most of the heavy lifting gets done in litigation if your case cannot be resolved at the agency level. Just the reality of the situation. So I have no idea why this attorney would tell you that all the work has been done. That's just nonsense. That that's meaningless. That attorney may not actually be an employment attorney or may not be familiar with the EEOC. There, something's going on there. That attorney might be an idiot. No one that I'm aware of has ever said to themselves, well, I'll take this case to litigation and it'll be easy because the EEOC did a lot of work on it. No, it's never happened. They might say, listen, the EEOC found some good evidence and that's going to help me fight this case and I might make it worth more and it might be less risk and that might be great. That, that could happen. But they're never going to say, in my experience, oh, the EEOC did so much work here that the litigation is going to be like no work at all not the case litigation is generally going to be uh, hundreds of attorney hours so I guess what you're asking here is two questions uh, one how can I be sure the attorney is going to get you more money if the EEOC is already actually representing you in litigation and I can't I'm not a fortune teller I can't tell you what will and won't happen I can't tell you for sure I can tell you if uh, my little sister had a case, workplace discrimination, sexual harassment, whatever it is, and the EEOC came to her and said, hey, we're going to have our attorneys litigate this case for you, I would still tell her to hire her own attorney. 
The EEOC is not, if I'm being honest, generally going to have access to the best and brightest attorneys. Just, just being upfront, people don't um, generally run into government work because they're all that competent. People run into government work because they don't want to work a difficult job or they don't want to be someone who can be easily fired or they want like pension and benefits and things like this or they want an easier workload. But generally speaking, if you're an employment attorney and you're going to prosecute workplace discrimination claims, you would generally speaking want to work for yourself because you're going to make some percentage, whether it, I guess 30% is what you're talking about here. It seems low to me, but somewhere between 25% and 50% of whatever you win for somebody, you, you want to keep that, right? So that's obviously a huge amount of money if you're a very good attorney, right? If you have access to very good cases and you're very good at your job and you really do amazing at representing people, uh, then when you get your percentage, you will very rapidly in the course of your career be a little bit wealthy, a little bit comfortable, right? So um, it might make sense to ask yourself, if you're in the business of representing people in employment cases, why would you want to make barely six figures working for the feds while doing all the same work and all the same labor. Why would you prefer that six figures with the feds instead of just saying to yourself, hey, I'll just take the cases I want and I'll make, let's call it third, let's just call it a third, a third of everything I win for somebody. You win somebody a million dollars, you get 333,000. I think you can see why somebody with a greed motive might go into private practice and might not work for the federal government. So, yes, I would absolutely, if the EOC was actually representing you, I would absolutely still tell you to get an attorney. I think you'll do better in the long run having someone represent your interest and advocate for you. Um, I think in the long run, it will be worth it. You will do better in settlement or in the ultimate victory here. Now, that being said, I can't guarantee, right? I don't know who you're going to hire. I don't know what's going to happen in the case. I can't, I can't give you a guarantee or foretell the future and tell you, yes, if you give this attorney a contingent percentage, you will do better. And it will, you will do so much better that it'll be worth it. I can't say that. I can't say that. I don't know that. I can't, I can't tell you what to do, nor would I, right? I would never substitute my judgment for your own. You seem like a very intelligent human being. So all I can tell you is if you were my family, I would be telling you to get an attorney. Now, that's assuming everything is as you believe it to be. That they're actually going to litigate this for you. <clears throat> I don't believe that at all. I think that's very unlikely. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you're right, and I hope they do this for you, and I hope that it, it works out wonderfully. Uh, but statistically speaking, the EOC ain't gonna do shit for you. Just they're not. They're not gonna litigate the case. It's incredibly unlikely. And again, I'm just talking statistically. Like, it's unlikely that they will extend you that service. They could, they might, and it sounds like they've been very clear with you that they will, and I really hope that is the case. But I've seen them talk that talk before and then wander off and nothing happens for four years. Which is a very significant problem in terms of your case, right? So my fear is and I think this is going to annoy you, but my fear is they're talking a big talk. But they're not going to do any of the actual things that would need to be done to litigate your case because that is an incredibly work-intensive job with a tremendous amount of thought and investment and risk and blood, sweat, and tears that goes into it. And... Um, in my opinion, it is unlikely they will engage in that long road of blood, sweat, and tears. I could be wrong. You could have the most amazing EEOC office in the world, and it sounds like you feel you do, and that's amazing. I hope that is the case. Those offices do exist. There are good people working for the EEOC. Um, I know many of them, right? And that's not just something I say because I don't want them to get mad at me because I talk shit about the EEOC on this channel, right? Like I do legitimately know amazing EEOC employees. I also know fundamentally the EEOC is a failed agency that's understaffed, underfunded, 
and generally has a lot of people who just don't give a fuck working for them. That upsets me a great deal. Now, I fundamentally believe that attorneys can still do a really good job in the EOC and can still help people. But the key phrase there is attorney, like attorneys can still make the EEOC into a useful tool if they know how to use it for their clients. But counting on the EEOC is a daunting proposition and not the kind of odds that I like to trust when I'm betting. So, Chris, I guess my answer is can't guarantee you if the EEOC is representing you that an attorney will help. I cannot guarantee that. But if you are my family, I would still be asking, I would still be advising you to hire an attorney. Two, I don't know what that attorney was talking about, but litigation is a tremendous undertaking. The EEOC getting a good feel about your evidence and being positive about your evidence does not alleviate the incredible workload tied to litigation. So that attorney may have thought he or she was going to get you a quick settlement or might be a moron or might be just trying to get you to sign up and talk fake confidence. I, I don't know. Or they might they might fully believe the EEOC is going to do this whole case for you. Which again, I come from the angle of saying, I have concerns. I don't know if that's true. I'm not trying to annoy you. I'm just concerned knowing the EOC and seeing what they say to people and what actually happens. I'm concerned that that may not be true. Um, I always recommend you schedule three to five consultations, not one, right? There's a lot of really bad attorneys in the world, and there's a lot of really, really bad employment attorneys, like a lot, a lot. Um, you look up and down the row at an employment attorney conference, I often wonder, uh, of these 20, 25 people, how many of them actually help clients? I was at a conference a couple weeks ago in Miami. Looked up and down the row. A couple of them couldn't dress themselves in the morning. A couple of them couldn't really speak, um, couldn't really couldn't really converse in the lingo, the jargon of an employment attorney. Um, one of them tried to start a fight about um, vaccine vaccination, and literally the instructor was like, "Hey, you know that um, we're talking about sexual harassment, right? That happened. That happened." And then he like saw me at the pool bar later and was like, can you believe she shut me down? I'm like, yeah, bro. Nobody was talking about that. You just started shouting nonsense about an unrelated topic. That These people exist in our industry, right? So like, you can't just have one consult. Maybe that attorney you spoke to was amazing. I don't know. Maybe your EEOC is amazing. Maybe they're gonna do the right thing by you. Maybe they're gonna fight this <clears throat> and put up big numbers for you. I don't know. I'm just saying I have concerns and <clears throat> I would like you to have a couple more consultations with attorneys. Not with me. I'm not there's no profit motive here. I'm not saying you should call me. I'm saying you should talk to like four more attorneys, four more law firms and get a feel for what uh you feel might or might not help you. And then at least you can make an informed decision. If the EOC is not doing what you want to do, you can call up the attorney you liked and say um hey, uh, the EOC is handling this case for me, but I, I need my own representative. And odds are that attorney would, would still be happy to represent you, right? Like that would that would be the approach that I would recommend here. Um, and that's probably my best advice. At least have someone on deck. Figure out what firm you would actually like to work with if indeed you do end up wanting to work with a firm and keep their number, keep their information. That way you're at least prepared. You know what's out there. You know what your options are. You know who might help you, who you feel like would do a good job. And if things don't go the way you want with the EEOC, whether they represent you or if they do represent you and they're not doing it in the way or the fashion that you hope, um, you're going to have options. You're going to have plays in your back pocket that are ready to go 
And I think that's what I would want for you. Um, Chris, Chris for Hope, I hope this is helpful. I hope I haven't annoyed you. If you have follow-up questions, I will track the comments down below. I will absolutely because we've been going back and forth and I want to make sure that I'm actually answering your question. Um, and I apologize that I am reluctant to trust the EEOC. I want, I want what you're saying to be true. I do not want to disappoint you. I want it to come true just as you say. I very much want that to be the case. Um, if this video was helpful, like, subscribe, comment down below. It helps me to help more people just like you. And uh, remember, everybody works. Unfortunately, not everybody wins.